How cool is this? A friend actually made me this knife. I think it's called a peasant knife. Uh, I, cut, I cut a bunch of things with it. I do a lot of stuff with it. But yeah, as long as you keep it oiled, uh, it stays really nice. He also sent me this sheath to go with it too. Super neat. Yeah, I've been meaning to show that in some other videos. But yeah, I really appreciate him sending me that. Hey guys, so this is going to be a little different today. I'm going into 12 volt. So this is a Victron Phoenix 12 volt inverter. And these are actually really neat. So it's a 1200 VA, but so it's right around 1000 to a little over 1000 watts continuous. And these are low frequency. So it's actually really cool. It's got a little miniature toroidal uh, transformer inside of it. So it can handle heavier startups. And uh, it's kind of funny saying that for something that's only around 1,000 watts, but it's actually an impressive little inverter. So these uh, can hook up to or integrate into a Victron system. And a lot of times people will use these in van builds and different stuff like that. Uh, but I mean, with the goal being that they use very little wattage as for idle consumption, especially in eco mode, I think it only uses like one or two watts, something like that. And, you know, for people that are in a van or doing van builds, even this could be something that, like the main inverter in there, I guess, depending on what you're doing in there, um, or be used, as, like I said, as a companion. Or these can be used on their own. So I'm going to be using it. I actually bought it with the intention, and I bought it a while back, with the intention of using it in my truck and or camper. So I want to put this into the truck with some Anderson connectors and be able to move it into my camper also if I need it. I've got a really small camper. I'm going to be designing a, something for putting some little panels on there or something, but very small camper. I can put a picture of it here. But yeah, that's why I got it. And then at work, I do have a 2000 watt Honda generator that I haul with me. But in the event I don't have it or I don't want to haul it around, I can always have this in the truck potentially. So yeah, I definitely want to have that option, and that's going to be the goal here in this video. So I wanted to go over that before I focus in a little further on the inverter and show you guys the different things on it. So here's the back side of the inverter. This is the positive and negative battery cable terminals. This can take in two gauge wires, so that's the max you can put in there. This is the V direct connection where you can hook it into your servo to integrate it into your system. Or if you've got it standalone like me, you can get a Bluetooth dongle to hook to this too, which I may end up doing because that may be pretty cool to see. And you can set different parameters that way too, low voltage cutoff and stuff like that. So it may be worth it depending on what you're doing with it, especially if you've got like a van build or if you're doing something like that, then I would definitely say it's worth getting at least that. If not, if you don't already plan on getting the servo and all the other stuff to go with it. So here's on, and then there's eco mode here. Eco mode, I already mentioned before, uses really low wattage. So essentially it just searches periodically to see if there's any loads being used. If they are, eco mode will switch itself off. Otherwise, it uses almost nothing as it's running. So really good efficiency there. And then the grounding lug. The left side of the inverter goes over some of the different stats. And like I said, this is a 12 volt inverter here, but they do make a 24 and a 48 volt version of the same inverter. And then over here on the right, it'll show you what different uh, blinking on the on the light here. Let me rotate it back. So these two here, the alarm and power, it'll show you what flashing, not flashing, solid, all that means right here. Just so you guys, it's a, I guess it's a quick quick guide so in case people are seeing something they can just glance over on the inverter and see what's going on and then the front yeah very simple here it's basically just one receptacle so nothing special here on this side so here's where we're at currently with the project i have a 2006 dodge ram and it's a cummins so i have two different batteries in this i already put these terminal things on here so you get multiple different studs on the one and the reason I did it is because these cables were so frayed and messed up I went ahead and crimped new ones on 
put them all on here. And this gave me the opportunity to do the project here too, because I'm gonna use this for the positive and that for the negative. So that's gonna be, that part's pretty simple. Um, I've got a 200 amp breaker, a blue C breaker. I'm gonna be putting, I notched out some of the insulation here. So I'm gonna be putting that on there and then sending it underneath the truck. And I'm probably gonna go underneath a seat to put the uh, cables through there. And it's raining out today. It seemed like a good time to get most of this project done anyway. And I'm underneath the array built as a roof. So no drops by the way, just so everyone knows. But yeah, it seemed like a great time to get this going. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna struggle, <laughs> struggle with cutting and getting some more of this stuff out of the way and see if I can get that breaker in there. So this is under the front seat. I think most people, if they end up doing this, are gonna do it under the back seat, but it didn't work out for me there. I've got a lot of tools under there. So I'm gonna put an Anderson connector coming out right here, and I would go further deeper in, but the exhaust is back there underneath. So I'm gonna end up coming right here and then put the inverter back there. And the inverter won't have to stay hooked up all the time. I could just keep it in a box somewhere in the truck. So I think most people posting this video on YouTube probably would have vacuumed or something first, but this is real life here. So you get to see all the dirt and Cheetos and everything under the seat. So I got the negative run up. The positive, I may need to cut. It's a little long. I already have a lug on it, but it ended up being kind of long. All right, so we got the six inches of positive cut off. I put another lug on. Still not sure what happened there, but so this is ready to go on to the breaker there. Cool, so that is negative, positive are on, and then I'll be ready to put it slide the cables into the cab. So I have the breaker off, obviously. So it's open right now. So I'm not going to turn it on. Oh, I just dropped the nut. I'm not gonna turn it on, obviously, until everything is ready. So coming down from the engine, I have one clamp mounting it to the frame there. And I've got this protect protective uh, sheath on there too, whatever you call that. I can put a link in the description. Um, and then here's those grommets going through the floor. So that's under the seat there. So I'm gonna do positive and negative there. Um, so right as it goes in, I'll cut the sheathing there to allow it to go in separately. So I've got two different clamps on that. So now I'll just tighten the grommets down on the wire. I've got a lot of extra slack in the cab of the truck because I'm gonna crimp the Anderson connectors on in there anyway. So that's where I put all the slack, inside the cab under the seat. Not the most amazing looking thing in the world, but it should do the job. So now all I lack is the crimping inside and I'm gonna put a little bit more of the shield around the cable up in the, where the motor's at. So that's it for under here. I used the scrap pieces of that shielding for the positive and negative here, just going down. And then I can show you the wire went down that way. It doesn't rub on anything when I got a clamp right beyond that where you can see it underneath. So it should be fine there. I am gonna probably get one more piece, just a couple feet long, to go over this, just in case it were to rub on anything. I don't think it's going to, but 
I'll get a piece just for that because it's easy to put on and it costs basically nothing. And then I'll be ready to crimp those Anderson connectors on under the seat and then we can check the inverter. So it seems like with this project that everything I'm doing, I'm saying, you know, it's not pretty, but it'll work. <laughs> but, um, so I wanted to do Anderson connectors coming straight out here. So it would be kind of a quick disconnect for the inverter that I'm going to put in here. But uh, going from 2 watt to whatever the inverter is going to be, doesn't work. The Anderson connectors are different size once you go up from like a 1 aught or a, a 1 gauge. So uh, this is the next best option here. Basically just a single stud bus bar. Um, and these are 3 8 studs. So they can, I believe it's 250 amps you can put on these. So that's plenty for what I'm doing here. So uh, again, they're not super pretty where they're at, but they're under the seat. But yeah, so, and they come with let me see if I can, yeah. So they come with these caps here for afterwards. Um, <clears throat> but I am going to have the breaker off underneath the hood unless I'm using this inverter anyway. But yeah, so <laughs> this is the next step here. So now I'm going to, I'm not even going to bother putting some Anderson connectors in now. For now, I'm going to just put the inverter straight onto these lugs and do some testing and see what this inverter can pull. All right, so I have it set up in a not so ideal location here just to do some testing. All right, so before I turn this, the inverter on, I've got to close the breaker here or turn it on to get that ready. All right, so we should be on. I'm gonna plug in my shop vac here and check that first. Okay, time to go to something larger now. So this is uh, the larger Bosch hammer drill that I have. So ideally it would run this. I have a smaller one also, but I might as well start with the larger one that I have. Let's see. That's actually really good news. I can turn the, I might put a bit in it and see if it can drill through something, but that probably should do it there. So let's see if it can go one step up from that. So I don't really expect it to start the jackhammer. They have a soft start on them technically, I think I read somewhere, but um, I have that, uh, I have a Honda 20, or 2000 watt or whatever it is 2200 i think it's a 2000 uh, and it bogs down definitely when you start this up so let's see here So I did not expect it to start that. I really did not. <laughs> it, I guess the low frequency inverter, that, that really, really helps. Yeah, like I said, it bogs down the little generator that I have. It can run it. But uh, the cool thing about the jackhammer is once it's hammering, it's hammering. It's not like something else that could potentially, like if you were using a skill saw and it got stuck in wood, it's going to pull a little more juice. The jackhammer is just bouncing essentially. So when it's on it's on so if it can uh, start this it will run it that is really impressive runs the mixer as well so yeah that's a real game changer for me really cool so i was just about to pack it up and i realized i haven't shown you guys an actual trip so i haven't tripped it yet so i'm going to use my heat gun here to trip it so the heat gun should pull around 1500 watts or something so that should trip it right away we'll see what it sounds like here whoa that's 1500 watts okay it tripped it yeah so it could run it for the rated time 
there. So around five seconds, I think, for the surge, and then it can't run anymore. All right, guys, so before I give my final thoughts on this after having installed it, so I'll give my final thoughts, and then you guys can listen to my final, final thoughts here in just a second. But so I guess I would say the two of the kind of the cons for this, there's a lot of pros, actually, for something this size. It's actually really cool. Um, I would rather, I would prefer these, these studs here to attach to with a cable rather than these terminals. And I guess they did it like this, and you can put, you can put ferrules on this. But I guess they did it like this because everything is just completely covered. So for safety's sake, it probably is better. But for simplicity of install, in my install, I would have preferred to have some lugs here, but it's not a deal breaker. It wouldn't, uh, it's not a big deal to have these terminals instead. And then I guess second would be the fact that the alarm and the buttons are everyth and everything are on the back side, which was obvious with the photos, I mean, when I bought it. But it really would be cool to see all this on the front. And I guess that depends on where you're installing it. Maybe in a lot of cases, it wouldn't matter either way. But for me, I really don't have an issue with just reaching around behind it and switching it on. I just won't be able to see if there is an alarm. I guess everything will turn off either way. And if I ever do, if I do get, to, I do plan on getting that Bluetooth dongle here. It'll show me all those stats on that as well. So yeah, not a huge deal either way. So right before this, I mentioned some of the cons and the final con would probably be price. So it depends on what you're doing with this. Um, obviously with Victron, a lot of it you're paying for the quality of the device itself and what it can do. So it's not just an inverter, but it can be integrated into a system and it can be set in different ways, plus it's low frequency, which is all cool. But obviously there is a price difference between this and some of the inverters you'd find on Amazon and other places. So on the plus for me, the reason I chose this is because it's Victron. So really even people that aren't using Victron like Victron. So basically everyone likes them. And what they design and what they build lasts a really long time. And I got to say, I was super impressed. I was super impressed that it could run the stuff that it could. I really didn't expect it to run the jackhammer. I, I expected it to trip, and I ran all the devices for quite a while. I didn't do it on film, just to make sure that it wasn't some fluke or that it would eventually trip like it did with the heat gun. And it did not. So it ran everything that I'm going to need here. And I could picture this actually being, you know, you could have it in a car, in your trunk. You could design it to have it in something like that also. I mean, just in the kind of the application that I'm thinking about uh, for a vehicle, I think that's really neat. Yeah, so either way, guys, this was super fun. So I know it seems a little incomplete, but I'm going to be putting those Anderson connectors in soon. That way I've got a hard connection in there for this inverter anytime I need it. I think I'm gonna be using it a lot in the future in the truck. And like I said, possibly the camper also. And yeah, I may end up doing some more stuff on 12 volt systems in the future. So either way guys, stay tuned and thanks for watching.